Cinematic Insights of Paul Klee. Art does not reproduce the visible, rather, it makes visible. In film history, scholars generally attribute the start of modern cinema to the Italian neorealists, a rejection of cinema as pure entertainment, a questioning of technical and theoretical norms, and a desire to make films that would impact people in real life, i.e. create a meaningful experience beyond the screen or screening of the film. In art that pertains to the canvas, for lack of better term, painting and drawing, the birth of modernism, or modern art, is generally considered to have begun much earlier. As an artist, Paul Klee was not only ahead of his time in many ways, I think there is a compelling argument to be made that he is the inventor of color field painting but also he is one of the fathers of modern and abstract art, and although less famous, should be included with the likes of Picasso, Miro, and Kandinsky, for example. In addition to being an artist, Clay was also a teacher at the Bauhaus, and several weeks ago, without giving any thought to cinema, I read a compelling article based on his published teaching notes about five main teaching points that Clay felt were essential to being an artist, paintings and drawings. When I reread the article and thought about the relationship between art and cinema, I found that the fundamentals of Clay's teachings lend themselves well and have pertinence to the filmmaker. So, in an effort to see the artwork of Paul Clay with my own eyes, i.e. not a mechanical reproduction, after searching a bit online, I went to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Although I did not see the work I was hoping to, a later work from Clay's relatively short life, I did find five works on paper of Paul Klee in the modern and contemporary section of the Met. They are part of the Breglin Klee Collection, a collection of 90 works by Paul Klee that rotate on their dedicated wall. An influential art dealer and collector, Berggren said, subconsciously, Klee's work must have evoked the emotional vibrations that filled the many happy years of my youth in Berlin. Perhaps for a similar reason to Bregrin, of the five works I saw, I think Portrait of a Yellow Man is probably my favorite. But for the purpose of looking at Clay's artwork and teachings in a cinematic context, I thought the pathos of fertility to be the most compelling. Clay's lessons. One, take a line on a walk. Clay is famous for saying, a line is a dot that went for a walk. This way of thinking about a line is interesting because he is giving motion to it. A line is not a stagnant, dead thing, but rather a living, active thing, showing the movement of a point. In the pathos of fertility, we can see both and feel the movement of the character and their condition. As a film exercise, perhaps the equivalent might be filming a train pass by on a track, or filming a cityscape that is structurally still, but has movement i.e. cars, clouds, smoke. Lesson number two, observe a fish tank. Clay believed all artwork should be inspired by nature and would have his students observe and draw a fish tank, often turning off and on the lights in the tank and stirring the fish to ensure movement. After understanding the formations of nature, then perhaps one could try and create one's own, according to Clay. In Pathos of Fertility, not only is the work of art dealing with a natural process, pregnancy, clay represents the inner organs much more like a living plant that is growing and moving than a human body. Here the filmic equivalent might be more straightforward than Lesson 1, filming a fish tank, or perhaps the penguins at the zoo, or perhaps filming nature in its natural environment if possible, say a safari, might be more beneficial than filming nature in a confined environment. Lesson three, draw the circulatory system. Clay believed the process of making art was similar to the bodily process and was very interested in how things grow. Again, based on this idea that seemingly grounded or still things are actually always moving. We can see this in the pathos of fertility. While the figure itself is moving and captures a sense of exterior movement, we also experience the interior movement of the organs and the connection between the exterior and the interior as separate but also connected. Without a doctor or scientific cameras, it would be very difficult to film the circulatory system. So perhaps a mechanical equivalent 
might be filming a construction site or scaffolding being put up in a time-lapse form, or perhaps on a rainy day filming the path water takes down the street into a train. Lesson four, weigh the colors. One of the most exquisite aspects of Clay's artwork is without question his use of color. Only after grasping the first three lessons and notions of shapes and lines in nature would Clay introduce color to his students. Taking the idea of a color wheel and turning it into a sphere, adding black and white, as well as asking students to weigh the colors against each other. The pathos of fertility is not the best example of Clay's mastery of color. Portrait of a Yellow Man is probably a better example. Generally, I think his best use of color comes a bit later in his career, into the 1930s. But still, in the pathos of fertility, we see Clay use browns to nicely create a frame within a frame and a sense of drama. Also, the use of reds to show life and movement acts as a nice differentiator and adds emotion to the scene. For lesson number four, an interesting film equivalent might be finding and filming different colors of natural light or perhaps the sun setting, the changing of a natural color or colors. Lesson five, study the greats. We do not analyze works of art because we want to imitate them or we distrust them, according to Clay, but rather as to begin to walk ourselves. This perhaps is a truism for everything, but it is certainly for filmmaking. By studying films, we can understand the norms and the rules and then evaluate or break them. Here we can think of the filmmakers of Calle de Cinema and the French New Wave, or Italian neorealism, as having a strong understanding of the cinema that preceded it, and evolving it or adapting it for their purposes. If Orson Welles taught Hitchcock how to walk, perhaps Welles can teach me how to walk as well, or both can teach me how to run. Lesson five is much more challenging to apply to a given artwork than the others, as it is hard to quantify. Nonetheless, if we look at the pathos of fertility, we can find parts of the artwork that evoke ideas that preceded Clay, i.e. rejection of traditional figurativism, expressionism prior to Clay perhaps, Monk was born in 1863, and symbolism, for example. 